representations where they've already graphed the system. Look what they've done for you. They've already given you the regions, haven't they? See region one, see region two, three, and four. They're asking you which one of these regions is the feasible region. So is this just basically a test point question? They've done all the hard work for you, haven't they? And they've done the hard work here too, haven't they? So now, what about this one? Oh, this one's too easy because we only got one line. But look what they did, they gave us this huge ass grid over here, right? Okay, so let me get that out of the way. So I need, if X is zero, Y does all the work. So if X is zero, Y has to be three. See the half grid units in there? And how they allow you to be able to graph by half units? It's also a smaller grid, isn't it? Harder to work inside. If Y is equal to zero, the next has to be four. Now, X being greater than or equal to zero, means that you have to lock it off so it can't go to the left of the y-axis because all the x values have to be positive. And y being greater than or equal to zero means you need to lock off the y-axis. So it does look like you've got lots of regions out there, but these two constraints are effectively telling the program when you start shading, you're going to be up here. So you really don't have one two, three, four, five, six, seven regions, you've only got two regions. So it's either here or here. Okay, well, there was only one real line to graph out there, so a point test is pretty easy. Pick a point out here or pick a point in here. One, one, easy. Three times one is three, four times one is four, three plus four is seven, is seven less than or equal to 12? Then this must be my feasible region. See how it prevented you from going beyond the x and the y axis? Watch this, if I forget to put them in, see what it does? So you can actually, on the program, you could actually start with a test point early and start eliminating things. So think about this, this line now. If I had started with a test point on the feasible region, with just that line, it would have said everything out here, right? And now I come back and I say, hang on a second, I was supposed to have y greater than or equal to zero. Well, y values that are greater than or equal to zero have to be here, look what that did. Did that immediately remove everything below the y-axis, or the x-axis? And now do I also have to have x is greater than or equal to zero? So would that also be able to, would this basically do electronically what we did with that previous problem with the test point early in the exercise? Hey, that's a neat tool to think about. Maybe I'll have to wait till the end to get the test points down. So this turns out to be the feasible region in the problem. Save it, check it, and they're immensely happy. Now, is this shaded region bounded or unbounded? A bounded region is a closed region that has a blockage it can't get outside of. This is a bounded region. This is not a bounded region because does, does this area continue to go out to the left or right and go up? Is this a bounded region? No, because it still goes up, doesn't it? Is this a bounded region? Bounded means it's closed off and that's going to be important to us in the next section because most of the solutions we have for problems are gonna be bounded regions. But there was a new vocabulary term that we hadn't talked about and that's the only check that they have. Now, one of the other things they're gonna ask us to do eventually is to figure out what the corner points are going to be. Do we have enough information to know what all the corner points are? Uh, A, yes, because didn't we do intersect graphing? And aren't the intersection points always the corner points? So do we know that this is zero and three? And that this is zero and zero? Don't forget it because it's where your X and your Y's were zero in the problem but it's one of the points that's missed. And do we know that this out here is four zero? So those three points are gonna be used in the next section as well, and it could be useful for us. Okay, so I would have to actually type all those in here. I'm not gonna type, I'm not gonna type all those in here because I'm lazy. I wanted to get to the next problem for just a second. So how does the next problem complicate things? Now it's gonna give us more regions. 
So let's glance at this one real quickly and get some of the nuts and bolts down. And practice what I'm trying to give you that makes life easier on you. Intercepts for the top equation. If x is equal to 0, y has to be 3. See if y is going to be equal to 0, x has to be 3. Can I point test right now? Have you seen the, pardon me? 3. Okay, see so it's in between. If I click back on this point, see how it says on the 3 and 0? Okay. So test point early. Test the point on one side of the line. Very good. 1, 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Is 2 less than 3? Then right now we know that it's everything below this line, right? So look what I can do to kind of cheat or save myself some time. Everything out here is so far so good, right? Now let's go to the second line. Let's build it because it's automatically going to remove sections that are unacceptable out here. So x is equal to 0. y has to be 2. x is equal to 0. y has to be 2. And I, you have to be careful because when you get a small grid, that just kind of sucks. When y is equal to 0, x has to be 4. <coughs> now that turns out to be exactly the same point that we have. Actually, that's not there. There's 4. Okay, so look what it did. See how it constrained the area a little bit more? It took out this section over here, didn't it? Because it knew automatically it didn't satisfy the first condition, the second condition. Now, x is greater than or equal to 0. And y is greater than or equal to 0. Oops. Oops, that line's not in the right place. feasible region actually belongs inside there. Since you know that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, it was not smart to put the bucket out here for the shading. It would have been smarter to put the bucket in here for the shading. Because you know already that that has to be in the first quadrant. So you would have said shade here, don't shade out there. So you want to shade it out there, how it eventually took off everything else and said this was the right region, but it wasn't the right region. It's because because of where I placed the bucket in. So that's the correct region that we should have in the problem. Pay attention to your constraints and life will be easier for you when we found the right region. Now, is that a bounded region? Yes. Sure is. How many corner points does it have? Zero, 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 two, three, zero. You might be able to read it from the graph, but if you can't read it from the graph, how are you going to find this corner point? You do have a system, don't you? Can't see the system now. We do have a system, don't we? x plus y equals 3, and x plus 2y equals 4. If you can't read it off the graph, and I'll tell you right now that test questions, problems on the test that deal with the next section that deal with these, you're very likely not going to be able to read this off the graph because of the size of the numbers and the scale. So rather than guess at this, you don't have to guess at the intercepts because, doggone it, you use those to graph the problem. Don't guess at this. Stick it back into the calculator and run reduce row echelon off of the problem. Let the calculator do the work for you. Gee, that was systems, reduce row echelon, graphing, intercepts, new tool shading. Wow. We've covered a lot and pulled a lot of things back into play. The only thing we didn't do was cryptography in here. And maybe I'll write the instructions in the cryptography so you have to read the instructions properly. I wouldn't do that to you. That was a joke. Right? So, um, this exercise test is not due until Monday. 
give me this Monday to be a chance to be able to ask us a few questions. But we've actually covered just about everything we need to cover. And section, the next section, the linear programming, takes all of these tools and adds one more thing to it. So as we're going through, we're getting better at each of the tools, bringing them back into play, and then we're all—it's all aimed toward that last topic that we're dealing with. So those of, those of you that I don't see on Fridays, I'll see you. I'll see you on Monday. Have a